So you've been lucky enough to pull Kaching, and now you need to know how to use her. But how? There are so many steps involved to get a character ready in Genshin Impact. Well, I'll go through everything you need to know to have your teleportation monster up and running. I'll take them all, boss. First, pull her. That's the hardest part. There's no pity. There's no rate up. The only tried and tested method of getting her is luck. Genuinely, whales throw their wallet at Mahoyu without ever getting the five star they want if it isn't rate up. So, get lucky. Um, you do have her. Great. Farm all the core lapis. Now, you can use a claymore or her aerial attack to break them with ease, but you'll need several days worth of these and they take days to respawn. So farming these are the most important step you can do right now. How many you'll need depends on what your world level is at now. The higher it is, the more you'll need. The same for all the materials on this list. Oh, and you'll be required to cull literally every whopper flower on Tevat. These flowers drop sweet, delicious nectar that you need an abundance of for basically everything to do with Kaching. Look in your adventurer's handbook, see where they are, and kill them daily until she's complete. Well, that is one nectar collector. And you see this cube? Get very familiar with it. Maybe even take it to dinner. Get to know it a little, as you need to kill it a lot. Goodbye to your resin. Oh, oh no! Maybe you can get some artifacts for her along the way as these shot the gladiators pieces at high enough world levels, but more on that later. You need to kill this a lot. And of course you need boatloads of XP and more from their respective ley lines. But I'm the hell out of these unless you have enough left over from playing the game. Then you need to learn everything about prosperity, or at least get some books on it to throw at her. Best place to find these are Mondays and Thursdays at Taishan Mansion. Prioritize their auto attacks and try to keep the other two about even, with a slight preference to stellar restoration. Beyond that, you need to kill the wolf a bunch of times to level up her talents even further, but that's very long term. Now, you need a weapon. I won't go through the materials you need for these as they're too varied, but your best option is of course a rank five, the Aqualia Thavonia. If you own it, congratulations, use it. But the second best choice is the Black Sword from the Battle Pass, from its crit rate and great passives really making it shine on Kaching. It really is worth the purchase. And its existing makes all other gacha options moot unless you're a die-hard free-to-play player. If you absolutely can't get the Battle Pass, the best non-5-star gacha option is for Lion's Roar, and it's even better than the 5-star Skyward Blade. That doesn't work well with Kaching at all. Otherwise, you can get the Blackcliff Sword in the shop, which will hold its own as the best free-to-play weapon if the Garchia isn't on your side. And at worst, Iron Sting is a craftable option, but it makes Kaching sad. D don't give her an Iron Sting. I did that. It wasn't very good. And the last part of leveling her up is the artifacts. Now, you can build Kaching in two ways: a fun teleporting maniac or a boring solitary lady. You like the first? Good. There are two generally agreed on sets for Kaching. Two Gladiators pieces and two Thundering Fury or four Thunder Suva. It's worth grabbing them all to use against different enemies depending on what you're facing. But overall, two Gladiators finale dropped from world bosses and two Thundering Fury from Midsummer Courtyard are your best all around items to go for. Oh, and you want a chalice with electro damage. This takes forever to farm, especially with good substats, but it's worth it. Then your exact numbers will depend on luck, because there's more RNG and artifacts than on your average scratch card, but aim for as much crit as possible, while making sure your crit damage is about twice that. Then focus on attack. Physical damage is useless, so don't go for that. Note that her talents give 15% crit, so any crit above 85% will be useless should you get that close, so consider aiming a little lower. Oh, and fine, if you want to go physical, drop the electric sets for that thing. You can, I guess. Uh, and to be fair, it is better for some encounters. If you're lucky enough to get constellations, you can tell me about them in the comments, because I do not have that kind of luck. Um, mostly. That's a topic for another video. And now she's ready to play, but how do you actually play her? You've leveled everything up to max, refined, descended, but you have to play her. So she's a primary DPS and she should be doing the most damage on your team. She's not fit to be a support. She is the main person you're boosting up and that's why you need to make sure everything else is set up perfectly for her. Kaching has some of the fastest animations for a single sword user. Let me get some quick damage in with the base set of animations. If you do your final attack, you can cancel out a bit with a dash, which is quite a bit faster to get into the next attack. So do bear that in mind if you have a stamina spare. However, charge attack spam is by far the best damage Kaching can put out. 
it's one of the quickest in the game if you get the rhythm right to cancel the animation. So just hammer that subscribe button. I, I mean the charged attack button until you nail it. And remember, this attack gives some great knockback. You can send enemies flying for quick kills, but this can make it a less efficient damage method if you have to chase enemies down. So bear that in mind, depending on what enemies you're facing. The pattern is a little hard to get used to, but you need to essentially click and then through the animation of the second click for the charge attack, click again, and this will cancel the animation and send another attack out. Otherwise, you have to watch the whole animation, which really does slow down the damage you're putting out a lot. You want to use your special ability on cooldown, which is at a hairpin, inflicting electro damage. This thing gives you two options. Most of the time, you'll want to use the teleport, as whizzing around the map lets you get to where the damage needs to be faster, save that stamina for charged attack, and sets up some crazy reactions with constantly applying electro. Your other option is if you use a charge attack, it will detonate the hairpin, causing an instant explosion, but it won't make your attack steal electro damage. Most of the times this isn't going to be your best option, but occasionally it has its uses, say if you're up against an Electro for Tui that has Electro Resistance, you can still get that extra damage in without reducing the damage of your following auto attacks. Her elemental bursts deal a lot of AoE damage around her, enough to solo some packs of enemies in the world, and its energy requirement is quite low, so it won't be unusual to spam this on cooldown whenever it comes up. It makes her a beast at taking on waves of enemies, it doesn't matter how many she has to kill, it's going to do the same amount of damage. However, it has two notable functions to bear in mind beyond just the damage capability. First, it gives you about two seconds of total damage immunity, which can be insanely good to dodge massive damage during the child fight, for example. And its single target damage isn't astounding, so I actually recommend saving it for these tough situations during fights. And then you also want to bear in mind that you can actually cancel out of the animation before it completely finishes. So if you'll still be shooting around and dealing damage, you can start moving Kaching and start doing some auto attacks before you've even stopped hitting the enemies with your ultimate. So make sure you're paying attention to when you can actually move rather than just standing there like a sitting duck. And finally, team building. You want a team set up around maximizing Kaching's potential. For a thing, but since this is so gacha based, I'm, I'm not gonna cover it, since it just depends on who you're lucky enough to get. Given she deals mainly electric damage, the defense boost from, say, ice will mean little to her when the arena action goes off so build accordingly and i've saved the best for last perhaps kaching's most beneficial asset is in exploration you can dip over cliffs with ease skip an animo puzzle without even realizing get a little speed boost as you're dashing the works her teleport makes navigating the world even more of a joy and means even if you don't want to use her you should still bear in mind to bring her into your party for particular puzzles and that's it. Go forth and destroy the mains with your newfound knowledge. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Kaching Mains Guide for helping me understand the character when I first picked her up. This guide is just the tip of the iceberg on Kaching, so go check that guide out if you want to learn more. It's linked in the description. Beyond that, if you have anything else you want to ask me about my guide, feel free to leave a comment below.